Cows are cows, right? They all look the same and are all raised for the same purposes. Babies, milk, and meat. You can't tell me that some cows or cattle don't blow your mind with their uniqueness. Some are definitely far from your average cow, as you're about to find out. From racing bulls to fancy French beefies, here are the 20 most unique cows in the world. Number 20. Texas Longhorn Farmers have played a huge part in creating the cattle we have today. They've been modified over the years to give us what we need, but not the Texas Longhorn. Oh no siree. This cattle type plays to the beat of its own drum. Out of all other cattle breeds in North America, the Texas Longhorn stands out as a breed that is the way it is today because it wanted to be that way. It is the result of its ancestors that set foot on American soil nearby 500 years ago and had to naturally adapt to their environment to survive. That's probably why it has absolutely massive 8 foot long horns from tip to tip. Without being registered, restrained or regulated, Texas Longhorn cows are adaptable and hardy with a little bit of attitude thrown into the mix. They have well and truly adapted to the most challenging of environments without any of our help. However, these cattle weren't really all that popular until after the civil some US government officials destroyed the buffalo to defeat their Native American enemies, so longhorn cattle were brought in to graze the Great Plains where the buffalo once lived. They quickly dominated North America's beef scene. But we have a history of messing with perfection. Wanting to improve beef quality, farmers took part in crossbreeding and the true longhorn was nearly eradicated by 1900. Now it's time for the star topic. Farm inspectors were in for a surprise when they visited a farm in the United States. Upon entering one of the on-farm sheds, they spotted a woman bending over, washing a cow. It looked like a normal cow until someone got close to it. When they did, they noticed that the cow was pink and had been decorated with gold ribbons around its legs, neck, and stomach. Why on earth would a cow be pink? And why was this cow all dressed up like it had somewhere important to be? Comment down below with the hashtag star topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that being said, let's keep things moving. Number 19. Highland Cattle are you really an interior designer enthusiast if you don't have a picture of a highland cow on your wall? These beef cattle are truly spectacular. They are a Scottish breed with long horns and a shaggy coat originating from Scotland's Western Islands and the Scottish Highlands. Since they were first mentioned in a herd book in 1885, they have now been exported to many countries worldwide, including Australia, Canada, France, the United States, Denmark, and Finland. You might think that being exported to so many countries makes them popular, but these cute and fluffy looking moos aren't. There were just 2,500 breeding cows registered in the UK in 2002, with that number reaching 6,000 by 2012. By 2021, that number had plummeted to just 3,161, and they are considered endangered or at risk. But even though they aren't popular, they are many people's favorite cows in terms of looks. They have long, wide horns, woolly and wavy coats, and gorgeous reddish-brown coats. Some are also yellow, and a small number are silver, black, or even brindle. Most mature bulls grow up to about 1,800 pounds, while heifers typically weigh 1,100 pounds. Rather than being called a herd, highland cattle are known as folds. Interestingly, this is because they used to be kept in open stone shelters over winter, known as folds. Number 18. Shanina. Chianina cattle don't look like anything special or unique, but they are. They are a large, white Italian cattle breed known as one of the oldest cattle breeds in the world. They used to be raised as a drought breed, but are now mostly raised for beef. These unique dual-purpose cows come from the Val di Chiana area of central Italy, mostly around the province of Tuscany. They were raised in various Italian regions for about 2,200 years and were the primary source of agricultural power before we developed mechanical equipment after the Second World In saying that, Chianina cattle were still used for agriculture until at least 1970.
While they lost their popularity for their strength in the fields, they certainly gained it for their meat quality. Since the Second World War, Chenina cattle have been raised worldwide for quality meat, particularly in Asian countries, the Americas, and Russia. And there's certainly plenty of that meat to go around. They are described as the tallest and heaviest cattle breed, with mature bulls standing at 5 feet, 11 inches, and oxen reaching heights of around 6 feet, 7 inches. Bulls can also easily exceed 3,500 pounds. Number 17. Dani. You've heard of racing cars, but have you heard of racing bulls? Well, you have now. Dani cattle from India and Pakistan are light drought cattle popular for local bull cart races. There can be a significant price difference between a standard bull and a racing one, with some people paying up to five times the regular price if they have a particularly fast one. Dani cattle are medium-sized with straight backs, big humps, small faces, and short ears. They are found in a wide range of colors like black, red, and brown, and their tails often have white tips. They are not particularly large cows, which is perhaps what makes them ideal racers. Most males weigh around 881 pounds, while females are slightly larger at 661 pounds. Dani cows are known to be agile, sturdy, and hardy, and when they're not being used for racing, they are suitable for meat and milk production. Some farmers also use them for plowing. Number 16, Main Anjou. Pay a visit to the Pays de la Loire region of northwestern France, and you'll likely spot some very cool cows in a farmer's paddock. If they're brown and white, they'll likely be Main Anjou, a French domestic cattle breed that came to exist in the 19th century after crossing British Durham cows with local Mansell dairy cows. Initially, farmers raised Main Anjou as a dual purpose breed for meat and milk, but it's mostly now just a beef cow, and you can understand why because they are hefty. Most males tip the scales at up to 3,306 pounds, while females are slightly smaller at 2,200 pounds. At least eight countries now have this breed, with numbers sitting around 60,000. However, at least two-thirds of the entire population is in France, and 90% are in the Pays de la Loire region. This breed isn't overly popular in other parts of the world, but it doesn't mean they never will be. They just didn't make it to North America until 1969. With the the first ones making their way to Canada. They were then introduced into the United States via artificial insemination. Number 15. Parthenays. Parthenays are one of those jack-of-all-trades cows. They are French cattle from Parthenay in western France and used to be raised for droughting, meat, and milk. These days, they are more popular for beef, and you won't be surprised that they are more popular for beef when you learn about their heft. It takes just 120 days for a calf to weigh 363 pounds and 210 days to reach 612 pounds. When they're fully grown, Parthenay's males can tip the scales at 2,420. 25 pounds, while females weigh 1,763 pounds. They are no small fries, that's for sure. We first learned about Parthenay's cattle in the second half of the 19th century. This is when the insect pest Phylixeri destroyed vineyards. The vineyards were turned into pastures and many dairy cooperatives were formed. They brought in Parthenay's to graze the land and produce butter called Charent Poito. The butter was so popular that Parthenay's numbers reached 1.1 million by the end of the 19th century. These days, there's only about 43,000 Parthenay's, but many farmers still prefer them. They have double muscling, the bulls are fertile and hardworking, and they produce exceptional beef. They also reach a top carcass value, and their beef has lower cholesterol than chicken. It also doesn't hurt that females enjoy easy carving, and they suit most farming systems. Number 14. Montbelliard. Do you love Gruyere cheese? Then allow us to introduce you to the star of the show, the Montbelliard cow. These cows are from France and once made up 11% of the cattle herd in France by 1990. Just two years later, they were the second most popular dairy breed in France. While many cows are desired for their beef, the Montbelliard is a bit different. Their milk is like gold and it's often processed into Emmental and Gruyere cheeses. So if you're a cheese connoisseur, this will definitely be your favorite cow. 
Montbelliard cows are red and white with white heads and light muzzles. They have tough feet, strong udders, and bulls can weigh a hefty 2,645 pounds. Alongside their weight, farmers love these cows for many other reasons. They are exceptionally resistant to mastitis, a common problem affecting cows, and they also have excellent fertility. They also find calving reasonably easy and live a long time. And while their milk for cheese is what typically makes them quite popular, the beef is nothing to be scoffed at. They produce good quality carcasses with minimum excess fat. They also enjoy rapid growth rates, which is a recipe for success for farmers. Number 13. Bazardays. If ever there was a breed of cattle to tick all the right boxes, Bazardays would be it. I mean, just look at them. They're fine specimens. These cows come from France, with a history dating back to around 1895. They are known as a working breed and were described as hardy, resilient, and adaptable. Unlike many other cattle breeds, extreme heat and cold doesn't seem to affect them as much, and they also aren't overly affected by flies and ticks. Bazardays were imported to other countries like England, Spain, Belgium, and Australia in the late 1980s. and have grown to be quite a superior beef breed. Their meat has a delicious flavor and is well marbled, making it one of the first cuts you'd reach for if you knew your cows and steaks. Most Bazardays cows are dark to light gray with small dark hooves and tough horns. Males can weigh up to 2,425 pounds, while females typically weigh 1,653 pounds. They have exceptional muscular development, well-rounded rumps, broad backs, and a delicate bone structure. Then there are the mothering abilities. This breed is known to be great mothers, and they produce calves that can weigh up to nearly 100 pounds. Nearly immediately after birth, they're mobile and alert, and start developing muscles within just two weeks. Tick, tick, and tick. If you're a father looking for the best of the best, Bazardes cattles would undoubtedly be at the top of your list. Number 12. Limousin Cattle most people would have seen limousine cattle, even if they're not cow experts. Some experts suggest that these cows might be as old as Europe, with cave drawings in France dating back 20,000 years bearing a spooky resemblance to them. They are gold-red cattle from south-central France that are known for their adaptability and resilience. After all, the terrain in their homeland is rocky, rugged, and harsh, and they have adapted to be sturdy and robust. As a result, the cattle could be raised in isolated locations with minimal to no genetic interference. They were perfect just as they were. Initially, livers and cattle were used as drought animals. But the invention of mechanical agriculture equipment made them redundant in this respect. By the 20th century, their numbers dramatically declined as a result. However, farmers still preferred them for beef, so there was still at least a quarter of a million of them around by the 1960s. By the 21st century, they were the second most popular beef breed in France after the Charolais, and are now raised in about 80 countries worldwide. Number 11. Charolais Cattle if you're ready to make a move into farming, then you definitely want to start with Charolais cattle. These taurine beef cattle from France are definitely raised for meat and can sometimes be crossed with other desirable breeds like Hereford and Angus. They are France's second most numerous cattle breed, only losing the top spot to Holstein and the most common beef breed. By 2014, there were 4.22 million Charolais cattle in France alone. However, France isn't the only country where these cream to white colored cattle can be found. There are Charolais in at least 68 countries with world populations of around 730,000. The largest populations outside of France can be found in Mexico and the Czech Republic. Charolais cattle are also easily among the world's heaviest. Bulls can weigh up to 3,600 pounds, while cows typically weigh about 2,600 pounds. But aside from their heft and beef, there are other reasons why farmers adore them. They suit most farming systems, have exceptional muscling and conformity, and also boast superior natural live weight gain. Farmers also like how easy the carving process is for them, and how even their temperatures are for handling. Number 10. Belgian Blue 
Belgian blue cattle are absolute beauties. This beef cattle breed from Belgium is lean, sculptured, and double muscled. They can easily convert their feed into lean muscle, which means their meat has reduced fat content, but also reduced tenderness. They have a natural mutation in the myostatin gene, which inhibits muscle development. The cows also have lean meat because the mutation interferes with their fat deposition. They are also quite striking, aesthetics-wise, with blue-gray mottled hair and coloring ranging from black to white. But as beautiful as they are, and as muscular as they are, Belgian blues aren't without their issues. Their double muscling can often mean they're prone to dystocia, which is when they experience complications during birth. Belgian blues can have narrower birth canals, so many calves are born by C-section. Bulls also don't have the same semen quality and quantity and testicular weight as other breeds, so between getting pregnant and birthing, it's certainly not an easy process for farmers. Then there's the fact that they don't thrive in harsh environments and need more skilled management. You wouldn't own or rear Belgian blues if you didn't have experience with the breed, it just wouldn't make economic sense. Number 9. Jersey Jersey are dairy cattle originating from Jersey in the Channel Islands of Britain. They are known to adapt well to many different environments and climates, which is perhaps why they're now a pretty common breed worldwide. Many countries, including New Zealand, the United States, Denmark, and France, imported this breed for dairy purposes. They are also used as drought animals in Nepal. Jersey cattle descended from cattle stock brought over from the Norman mainland and became their own separate breed in 1700. There remained standard Jersey cows without outside influence for more than 200 years. These small cows weigh up to 880 pounds, while the bulls can weigh up to 1,500 pounds. The small size makes them popular for farm owners who want to maximize the number of milking cows while taking up as little space as possible. Jersey cows also calve easily, have low birthing difficulty rates, and have high fertility rates. They are also desirable dairy cows because their milk has high protein and high butterfat levels. Most Jersey cows are calm and docile, but bulls are known to be aggressive and unpredictable. Number 8. Galloways if you're a farmer who prioritizes pasture management and environmental friendliness, you'd probably be inclined to welcome Galloway cattle onto your farm. These polled beef cattle are desirable for their ability to handle extreme climates and temperatures and will thrive no matter your pasture quality. They will, of course, love high-grade pastures, but they can also thrive while having to forage for average pastures. As they are non-selective grazers, they are helpful in pasture management and are considered friendly cattle cows to the environment. Galloways are a Scottish breed and are believed to be the oldest polled beef cattle worldwide. They have double coats and there are three types, Galloway, Belted Galloway, and White Galloway. Mostly, they are all just referred to as Galloway cattle, regardless of their colors of white, red, and black. You can also purchase miniature Galloways, which have all the same qualities and features of regular sized cattle, but in a much smaller body. small-time farmers might prefer these over traditional Galloways. Alongside being one of the most unfussy cattle breeds, they are also incredibly fertile. They produce healthy calves, find calving easily, and are protective mothers. They also produce plenty of milk for their calves. The bulls are just as desirable and are often described as prolific breeders. The icing on the cake is that this cattle breed lives a long time. They are disease-resistant and easy to manage. Number 7. Dexter. Any farmer looking for an easy to manage small breed of cattle, Dexter would be at the top of the list. Dexter is an Irish cattle breed from southwestern Ireland that originated in County Kerry in the 18th century. This small breed only grows up to about 700 pounds, with bulls weighing up to 1,000 pounds. They have broad and deep bodies, well-rounded hindquarters, and three color coats of brown, red, and black. Most Dexters don't have any white markings, and most are also naturally hornless. Dexters are often described as a dual-purpose breed. Farmers use them for beef and milk, but their uses can vary from country to country. It's this versatility that makes them quite popular, and they can now be found in North America, Australia, Europe, and South Africa. 
Perhaps one of the most standout advantages associated with Dexter cows is their mothering abilities. They are exceptional mothers and will hide their calves from birth if they're provided with adequate cover. They also have such an abundant milk supply that it's not uncommon for them to feed their own calves and the calves of other cows. Most will willingly nurse whichever calf wants a drink. They are the ideal cattle breed for many farmers, but Dexters aren't without their flaws. Some have a gene that makes them prone to dwarfism. As a result, some cattle are born with shorter legs, making them up to 8 inches shorter than unaffected cows. If you breed two cows with the particular dwarfism gene, there's a 25% chance the fetus can abort early. Fortunately, DNA tests are available with the use of the cows' tail hairs. Number 6. American Brahman you probably won't find a more unique or unusual looking cow than the Brahman. The Brahman is an American Zebrine Taurine beef cattle bred in the US from 1885 but originating from India. They have big humps, exceptional parasite resistance, and great tolerance to heat, humidity, and sunlight. As a result, they've been exported to many countries with often challenging climates such as the tropics. Most of the time, farmers breed American Brahman for the meat industry, especially in hot and tropical environments, the meat is definitely not of the same high quality as European beef breeds, but that's sometimes the sacrifice farmers make for being able to raise cattle in challenging environments. Sometimes, farmers also crossbreed them with other breeds like Limousin and Angus to improve their meat quality while still retaining some of the breed's desirable traits. While most farmers use these cattle for their meat, that's not all they're used for. If you travel to Oman and Fujairah, you'll find them used in bull butting a non-lethal blood sport. Bull owners often prepare them for this sport by feeding them honey and milk. Number 5. Holstein Frasian See a black and white cow and you immediately know the breed. Holstein Frasian. They are an international breed of dairy cattle from North Holland and Northern Germany that are now popular throughout the world. Holstein Frasians are used throughout the north of Europe for milk and throughout the south for meat. Most Holstein Frasians are black and white, but they can also be red and white. There have even been rare cattle born with red, white, and black coloring. Most farmers prefer this breed for their productivity. They average about 7,655 liters of milk per year year with 3.2 lactations. Lifetime production sits at around 26,000 liters. There have been many noticeable Holstein Friesians throughout the years. Communist dictator Fidel Castro had one called Ubra Blanca, as did US President William Howard Taft, known as Pauline Wayne. A cow from Western Australia, named Nickers, also made headline news. Nickers was so large that she couldn't be processed at the local abattoirs. Some Holstein Frisians are also more desirable than others. Take Toy Story, for example. From 2001 to 2014, this bull sold more than 2.4 million units of bull semen, resulting in more than half a million offspring. Osborne Dale Ivanhoe, the bull, also mated more than 100,000 times, and his semen was shipped worldwide. Number 4. Panda Bull Calves being born doesn't typically make headline news, but it certainly did in Campion, Colorado in December 2010. On New Year's Eve, just shy of the new year, a rare panda cow was born, or in this case, a bull. According to miniature cattle breeder Chris Jessen, their rare panda cow has a panda face, which is hard to come by. He said he has black around his eyes, a little black on his head, and a black belt. Chris said at the time, there were only 24 of them registered in the United States, and he owns two of them. Chris breeds the adult miniature pandas with low-line Angus, giving the offspring a 50% chance of coming out looking like a panda. Now, you might be wondering about panda-like cattle's value. Chris breeds these purely as pets, and ones that look like pandas are obviously going to be worth a lot more. He says some people believe they're worth around $30,000, and at one time, panda-like cows did sell for $30,000. I guess they're only worth what someone is willing to pay for them. Number 3. Ankle Watusi 
you'll see few cattle breeds as interesting and as unique as Ankol Watusi. This modern American domestic cattle breed comes from the Ankol group of Sanga cattle, originating in east and central parts of Africa. You could definitely spot these cattle in a crowd since they are most noticeable by their massive horns. Their horns typically have the largest circumference of any cattle breed, to the point where they almost look disproportionate to their bodies. This is because the average male and female don't grow overly large. Males are typically 1,300 pounds, while females are only slightly lighter at 1,212 pounds. Most Ankol Watusi cattle are red and white, but they can also be a wide range of colors. The breed first came to exist when they were introduced by nomadic pastoralists to Uganda up to 700 years ago. Now there are at least five strains, which can often be called their own breeds. To be fair, they all look fairly similar to each other. Traditionally, this breed was considered sacred, and most people owned them for their milk. They were rarely used for meat. Farmers would graze their cows all day and let them return home to their young calves so they could briefly feed. They would then be separated again before herders would milk them. Because of their unique appearance, the cattle were imported by European zoos during the late 19th and early 20th centuries because people would pay to see them. They definitely are the showstoppers of the cattle world. Number 2. Normandy Normandy cattle are an all-around desirable breed. That much is obvious by how long they've been around. They originate from Normandy, France, after Viking conquerors brought them into the country during the 9th and 10th centuries. Over a thousand years later, they remained desirable for milk and meat. Sadly for the breed, populations were decimated when Normandy was invaded during World Two, but there are still more than 3 million of this cattle breed in France. In this country, they are utilized by their rich milk, which works beautifully in the wide variety of cheeses they produce, such as Camembert, Liverot, and Pont l'Evêque. In the United States, they are mostly used for beef, but they have also become popular in recent years as dairy cows. In general, farmers worldwide love these cows for their rich milk, calving ease, fertility, strength, and grazing abilities. Normand cattle are easy to identify because they're quite unique looking. They are red and white with occasional bits of brown, which actually appears like brindle or tiger stripes through the red. They are medium-sized cattle weighing up to 1,500 pounds, while the bull can weigh as much as 2,400 pounds. Number 1. White Bread Shorthorn White bred shorthorn are quite rare cattle in that you just don't see them in your average farmer's paddock. They are British beef from northwest England and southwest Scotland and are derived from traditional shorthorn cattle. However, they are only white, whereas other shorthorn cattle come in all different colors. Most farmers decide to purchase these cattle to graze hill pastures since they're quite unfussy about where they eat and what they eat. No one knows where exactly the breed comes from, but it was first noticed in the late 19th century. At this time, it was called the Cumberland White. They were then called white bred cattle, and the bulls were mainly used for crossbreeding. Their numbers increased after 1900 to the point where an entire day was needed for their sales at the Newcastleton auctions. In 1962, the White Bread Shorthorn Association was formed, consisting of nearly 200 breeders. Surprisingly, sale numbers are now in the single figures, but breed association sales still happen in Carlisle during spring and autumn. As it turns out, cows aren't just cows. There are so many unique breeds throughout the world. And if you could own any of these cows as pets, which breed would you choose and why? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. We'll see you next time then, folks. This is Jake the Voice Pass signing off. Thank you very much for watching and have a good one.